for meeting the call, meeting to order of the Ordinance Committee, April 9th. Um, may we have a roll call? Councilmember Gutierrez. Here. Councilmember Rouse. Here. Madam Chair Sedden. Here. Thank you. And do we have any public comment for items not on the agenda? We do not. Okay. With that, I'd like to invite staff report. Madam Chair, hi, Rob Dayton uh, with Public Works. And this afternoon, we're here to talk to you about the ordinance fulfilling council's wish to really put a cap on scooter share and then also talk about bike share from the circulation element and then some cleanup language for licensing. Uh, I'm going to introduce and hand it over to Sam Furtner, who you may know as our mobility coordinator, who's worked, worked a lot on this. Uh, also, Dan Hinchke has worked on this, and Jessica Grant, who leads the transportation planning team. So take it away, Sam. Thank you, Rob. So uh, good afternoon, Ordinance Committee. Uh, my name is Sam Furtner. As Rob mentioned, I am the mobility coordinator with Transportation Planning Division of Public Works. And I'm, I'm here today to just provide a quick update on the development of a shared mobility ordinance and the potential implementation of a bike share pilot program. So we're really here to do three things today. Uh, essentially, we'd like to take previous council and policy direction on scooter and bike share into account and uh, introduce some proposed amendments to the shared mobility ordinance. Uh, specifically, we'd like to look into um, what the available bike share system options are, as well as what a potential bike share pilot program might look like through the shared mobility ordinance. And then lastly, we'd just like to do a little housekeeping on um, some somewhat antiquated bike licensing requirements. So just to jump into it, um, in looking at scooter share and council direction, in June 2018, in response to unpermitted or rogue scooter launches here in Santa Barbara, we issued uh, Urgency Ordinance 10.53. Fast forwarding a little bit to uh, early February of 2019, after extensive research and city staff hosting a public scooter workshop at the Louise Lowry Center, uh, we returned to council uh, with Scooter Share and at that time received direction that scooters must be safe and technologically inoperable on city sidewalks. This was in response to uh, a number of uh, public safety and operational concerns that we were seeing with scooter shares. Um, and specifically looking at head injuries, uh, the propensity for bone fractures, uh, as well as right-of-way obstructions. Um, so at this time, uh, no permits have been issued, and um, that's where scooters are at this point. Uh, fast forwarding a bit from there to today, we're at Ordinance Committee with some proposed updates uh, to the shared mobility ordinance uh, that would allow the development of device-specific rules and regulations. And I'll get into that a little bit more in the coming slides. So shared mobility is not just about scooters. Uh, it also encompasses bike share. And uh, we actually have some policy direction here in the city regarding bike share. Uh, the potential benefits of a bike share program were mentioned in the 2011 circulation element of the general plan. Uh, and the 2016 Bike Master Plan actually called for the implementation of a bike share program here in Santa Barbara. So we have taken this, this previous direction on both scooter share and bike share into account, and uh, we propose amending 10.53, uh, the shared mobility ordinance, with the intent to provide more adaptive regulation for the rapidly evolving field of shared mobility. And specifically uh, within 10.53 and the shared mobility ordinance, we'll be covering uh, the components of scooter share. And as I mentioned, some of the technological and safety limitations inherent to that. We'll also be looking into what a potential bike share pilot program could look like. And really the intent here is also to, to prepare for the next kind of unknown shared mobility device. And the idea behind that is that we can generate specific rules and regulations within the ordinance to govern each type of device as it comes forward. So two years from now, we don't know what the next device is going to look like. We need to be adaptive to that. 
So we have a really unique opportunity here in the city in that we actually already have a regional bike share um, on the south coast. Hopper uh, was introduced at UCSB on August 31st of last year. Uh, the city and a number of other nonprofit partners and governmental entities in the region were involved in the selection process for Hopper and we get to kind of vet them and see how they've been doing. Uh, at the time, it was anticipated that Hopper would see regional usage, and indeed that's what's happening. Right now we have, uh, excuse me, Hopper has around 500 three-speed bikes in service, and uh, either soon to be or currently do have right now around 20 pedal assist e-bikes uh, as part of a pilot program uh, between Isla Vista and Goleta and UCSB proper. And so far, um, Hopper has been quite successful at UCSB. So in looking at bike share systems, there are really two principal methodologies. There's a, a docked system, which you see on your left, and there's a dockless system, which you see uh, uh, an example of with Hopper and Isla Vista on the right. And there are pros and cons for each type of system, which I will get into. <coughs> So in looking at a docked system, um, some of the, the benefits here are that uh, given that you have to approach a docking station, interact with a kiosk, and ultimately rent the bicycle from a docked location, complete your ride, and then return it to a docked location, um, these interfaces tend to be a little more orderly. You can't leave a bike haphazard. You have to park it in a certain fashion at this docking station. This is an older technology, and uh, because of that, it has a demonstrated history. These have been successful in a lot of cities. Um, some of the cons with this type of an operation are that they tend to involve fairly significant infrastructure requirements, uh, which, which can be expensive on the front end for cities. Um, and additionally, uh, because physical docking locations are required, uh, these, this type is a little bit more location limited, which can in turn be slightly more inconvenient for the end user, for the bike share user. Uh, in the last two years, we've seen the evolution of dockless systems. Uh, again, these are hopper bikes out at UCSB. Um, they have quite a bit more flexibility because you can essentially uh, walk up to one of these bikes, unlock it with an application interface on your smartphone, rent the bike, use it to complete your ride, and then deposit the bike in a designated parking area and end the ride on your smartphone app. Uh, so they're, they're a lot more flexible than a docked system. Uh, you can pick up and drop off almost anywhere. Some of the negatives of this type of system, uh, like we see with other dockless technologies, is the potential for street clutter um, and a concern for right-of-way obstruction, other public safety concerns. Let me ask you a question quickly just mm -hmm. on that, on, on the pros and cons. Is one or other, either dockless or docked, is the bike itself heavier or more cumbersome, or is there a difference in the bikes themselves, or...? Uh, I would say that um, the bikes tend to be somewhat comparable, but really th that would be sussed out in the uh, the RFP process. Okay. So we'll kind of get get to see an example of what they would bring to Santa Barbara if if we move forward with this today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect seg into uh, my next point here, which is uh, what would the regulation require uh, to to implement a potential bike share pilot program. Um, we actually went to the Transportation and Circulation Committee on this topic uh, last year sometime and brought up these key issues um, and really the main things that we want to focus on and address in the implementation, the potential implementation of a bike share pilot program are uh, sidewalk hazards and clutter. We need to require our operator to, to really quickly remove any bicycles that might be left on sidewalks and really to limit the amount of city staff time that could be involved in this. Uh, additionally, I'd like to point out, too, that um, we also propose changing current language in the ordinance, 10.53, that prevents unlawful parking in crosswalks, public sidewalks, paseos, etc., to include parks, um, except in designated locations. And please refer to the handout uh, for the exact language on this. Another consideration here is uh, vendor operations and responsibility. Uh, we want to make sure that our operators are held accountable for operating safely and responsibly. Data accessibility is a, an emerging issue. We want to be sure that the city has access to data that can allow us to understand user behavior. 
and to inform decisions about siting locations. Equity is also a concern. Uh, we want to make sure that bike share services are available to all communities, uh, particularly focusing on identified low to moderate income census block groups. Uh, availability is also a concern. Uh, we need to maintain a sufficient supply of bicycles in high traffic locations, uh, such as transit hubs. Uh, public safety is also a concern. Uh, and we need to ensure that our operator makes sure that the bicycles are in safe operating condition and that they are operated in a safe and lawful manner as well. So if we uh, get direction today to, to move forward with this, with the proposed amendments, some of the next steps would look like uh, this. First of all, we're here today to update 10.53, the Shared Mobility Ordinance. Uh, I've also provided a draft copy of the bike share specific rules and regulations. We would combine those two elements and uh, hope to uh, initiate a request for proposals. And once we've chosen a vendor, uh, we would shoot for a potential of a three-year pilot program. That would be a maximum length of the program. And the staff is also proposing that permits would be renewed annually so we can kind of gauge the success as we move along and we can cancel at any time if we need to if it's not working with that i'd just like to move into one quick order of housekeeping which is in uh, going through the municipal code we actually found a chapter 10.52 that uh, required annual registration of bicycles with the police department and it was meant to discourage the theft or resale of stolen bicycles. Uh, this ordinance language is from 1975, and it's a little antiquated and, frankly, uh, pretty unenforced. So staff is proposing that we amend this language to remove bicycle license requirements in the city. And just as a side note, this is a vintage Santa Barbara bicycle license from 1958. <laughs> Uh, with that, I would just like to move into staff recommendations. Um, first of all, that the ordinance committee forward to council for introduction and ordinance of the council of the city of Santa Barbara, amending chapter 10.53, shared mobility services of the Santa Barbara municipal code pertaining to shared mobility services and devices, and amending chapter 10.52, bicycles of the Santa Barbara municipal code to repeal sections 10.52, 010 through 10.52040 and section 10.52060 pertaining to bicycle licenses. Um, and I would also just mention that we made some last minute changes, hence the uh, copy on your desk. So if there is a motion today, um, it should include the updated language on unlawful parking. And with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Councilmember Gutierrez? No. We're turning it off. Council Member Rouse. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, curious about uh, the existence of zip bikes. Um, I know that I, there were some stations here in town at one point in time, and if they still exist and if how successful those programs have been and are. Madam Chair, Council Member Rouse, are you, are you thinking of zip car? No, there was a there was actually a zip bike. Uh, a couple of installations. I know when Sonos came in, they were actually going to install them in their stations. And I know that they have it. But Beach City is one of those areas that has it as well. Zip bikes. Zip bikes, just like they have in Europe. No, okay. Not from. We do know the 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 bike share that's at Paseo Nuevo. Nope, different oh, one. But we don't have the statistics. Okay, this is this is like the one of the original, you know, uh, rollouts of it. Uh -huh. It was a big, big in Europe. Okay. The video. Um, when it comes to these different kinds of bikes, I noticed that UCSB was doing, they had 20 of the pedal assist e bikes along with their normal bikes. And uh, what the intention of the city might be with that, and also how that interfaces or if it cooperates with the people that are in the business of renting those here in town as a concession. If all of a sudden that we bring in another basically concessionaire. And that's my first question. The second question is, is the desirability of that? Because as we struggle with all this new, all these new modes from anywhere from Segways to scooters to the little, little four-wheel drive electric things that we find either on the bike path or the sidewalk, 
uh, you know, I get a slurry of questions from, uh, from constituents about what's the rules about X, Y, and Z, and I, you know, I don't know, ask the ordinance chair. She might know, but I don't know. So I, I was wondering about that, and uh, yeah, I guess those are my questions. So, so, so first of all, just about, you know, what's the desirability of including uh, e-bikes in this idea, or would you rather just stay with human powered so we can kind of maintain the bike lanes as a more of a, a the same, you know, as opposed to going 20 miles an hour, you're pedaling on at seven or eight miles an hour. Yeah, so Madam Chair, Council Member Rouse, on the, on the compatibility and competition with cycle shops that are renting, I think that that's a real concern. I, I know that in other cities, if you're told that if you're renting a bike for all day use and you're going to be out, that you should rent it from a vendor, not on a cycle share. But if you're going to just go point to point as transportation, the cycle share is a, a cycle um, share, bike share is a better um, is a better product. So that's that's you know what we've heard. But I, I think it's I think it's something we want to we want to analyze in a, in a uh, you know, if you want to move forward with a permit a pilot program, we should, we should analyze that. In terms of electric bikes, it's, it's interesting, um, Hopper who, and, and Mr. Ferdinand mentioned this, the reason we did the Hopper is we, we are, we're concerned about the issues that a bike share will bring about, particularly the dockless where, you know, the, un, the disorder. And so we've been, we collaborated with the county, uh, with other, uh, City of Goleta, and the bicycle coalition on the hopper uh, uh, getting the right vendor for ucsb and then trying it out so we've been watching that very carefully uh, we do think that they're a responsible vendor we don't know how they would respond to an rfp in the in the pilot program but they in their uh, bikes the the way the electricity works is that you drop it into the basket and you're actually you're actually uh the end user has the battery with them and they can drop it in any bike that is that has the electrical cap capability and then other vendors are saying no we're going to do it a little differently it is going to be all you know they're going to you can either rent an electric one or you're going to rent a non-electric one so we still have to we, we still need to do homework in terms of what would be best for santa barbara and that's what we'll be looking at too so in terms of the bike lanes uh, and you know if you're electric you're going a little faster that's a that's an issue, you know. I've been telling people we're at the flip phone stage of the electric bike, <laughs> uh, and and I really do think it's going to be a very Santa Barbara thing, and we'll have to see how we deal with that. I'm, in the bike share realm, we're, we can monitor that. We can't in the privately owned electric bike, as you well, know. That's kind of precise. And my point is what you just brought up, because a lot of these shared mobility concepts are, are really good in dense urban areas. You know, when you quote unquote the last mile and so on and so forth, or at a place like UCSB, and I've spoken to the people at UCSB about the rollout. Uh, they're in a, they're in a little bit of hell because they, even though they're not scooter shared, scooters come in from IV all the time and are all over campus. And but uh, they launched, the, they went through some vendors and went through a lot of RFP about how to do the bike share thing out there, and they're trying that now. But once again, it's a very dense. Uh, no availability for for parking kind of area where it, here we do a lot of tourism and hospitality so the people that are out there vending and renting bikes to folks that want to tour around is probably our primary maybe the primary market i don't know if it's going to be feasible i know with the zip car going back to that we also had problems with even trying to get that and expand that into the use that we originally envisioned so i would like to tread a little cautiously on this and i'd also like to honor people that actually ride bikes as opposed to cruise around on the faster electric uh, devices so we don't end up with conflicts there okay thank you okay thank you and i had a, just a couple of questions and then do we have public comment or will oh we do not okay so we'll ask questions and then go ahead and deliberate um so it in the proposal or their RFP, will there be a fleet size limit or is that flexible depending on how it's going? Um, yes, to answer your question, uh, pardon me, yeah. uh, Madam Chair yes. Snedden, uh, we, we definitely would propose a fleet size limit um, and the intent behind that would, would actually be to start much smaller than we would like to go and ultimately scale up until we find the kind of right size fleet for Santa Barbara. 
Um, I know in speaking to a number of vendors that uh, preliminary siting is a common step in uh, even the submittal of, of an RFP. So we hope to learn a lot more if, if we do in fact go forward with an RFP process from the vendors themselves about what they would consider for a city the size of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then, um, so are the, and these permits would be up every year for renewal. So if it's just not working out with a particular vendor, there's an opportunity to either adjust or to scale back or take it away, the permit? Madam Chair, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, we hope to uh, shoot for a maximum of a three-year pilot program, but within that pilot program, um, ultimately have a yearly uh, cancelable at any time okay. permit. And I have two more questions. Um, one is just for the bicycle registration. You still have the option to register your bike. It's just not a requirement that you register your bike. Council Chair Snedden, or Committee Chair Snedden. Uh, yes, that's correct. As a matter of fact, um, there are a number of other national bike registries that are in place currently. There's the National Bike Registry, and there's also a bike index, which is what SB CAG recommends people res register their bicycles with. So if you're in the possession of a, a nice bike and it's new and you'd like to register it, and that would be a best course of action. Okay, and then just one more question. Um, it seems to me that Dockless might address equity issues better than Docked, and have is do you have a recommendation on that, or have you looked into that in other communities? Um, committee Chair Snedden, uh, committee members, we have looked into that. Uh, at this stage, it's really hard to tell what's most effective, mm -hmm. and I think again, uh, seeing with that with that equity component um, in our RFP, we're really curious to see what, what we get from vendors and what we see. Uh, we recognize an issue with availability and access and equity, and uh, in some sense, dockless is more flexible, but at the same time, um, a docked system could also address that if the siting was done mm -hmm. effectively. Would that be something that's determined through the responses to the RFP, or is that something we're deciding before the RFP goes out, whether we're looking for a docked or dockless? We would look at that through the RFP process. Okay. One of the things that Mr. Fertner mentioned that we want to avoid is he talked about how a dock system is more infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And, and quite frankly, this is one of the things we've been kind of afraid of, you know, mm -hmm. State Street, how does it change the look? What does the Historic Landmarks Commission think of that? And then, and then do, we, do we, the city, want to pay for that when we're doing a trial? Mm -hmm. These are the, some of the things we're, we're a little cautious on. So we, we're, well, we're putting it out there with the expectation that the city would not be paying for anything to have a business run, to license a business of bike share. So, so if we got a, a proposal for a docked system and it looked attractive and it didn't cost us anything and it could be taken down, then maybe. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to get. Okay. But that's how we would approach it. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Gutierrez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could you remind me on the, the laws of the helmet use? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Madam Chair. Council Member Gutierrez, it's uh, 16... You're, uh, you're required to wear a helmet until 16, and then afterwards you don't have to wear a helmet. Okay, so the, the rider would have to bear the responsibility of providing their own helmet? Uh, that's correct, uh, but what, the, what the, most bike share companies do is that if you uh, subscribe and ask for a helmet, they'll send it to you uh, free of charge. That's a pretty common launch, uh, but that is a concern. Um, it, the vehicle code does not require uh, helmets. You know, that was one of the things with scooter share that we were a little alarmed at. The, the scooters were required to operate, and then the legislator changed it to no helmet. Um, we believe you should wear a helmet when you're on a bike, no matter what age you are. Uh, and so, w you know, the, the way we would deal with that is we would ask the vendor to, you know, be really strong on wear a helmet. The vehicle code doesn't. Um, require it and that's a challenge and is it are riders required to have lights in order to ride the bike at night and do these bikes come with lights yeah. um, committee member Gutierrez uh, in answer to your question 
yes, these bikes do come with lights, and that's part of our uh, vendor operations in the um, bike share rules and regulations. So these bikes are required to have front and rear headlights that can illuminate up to a certain distance, uh, mandatory on the bicycles. So they would be able to be operated at night, because I know some of the scooters would shut themselves off once it got dark. That's correct. These would be able to operate at night. Okay. And do you know how much money these companies would gain from from being operated in Santa Barbara? I don't know off the top of my head. <clears throat> it's an excellent question. And we, we don't have the research on that. Well, one of the things that we want to avoid is that uh, it, the city would incur costs, even if it's in kind, and having to manage uh, this. So, like some of the preliminary conversations we had with Hopper, for instance, one of the things that I'm, I'm concerned about is, you know, we can't, we can't, we, we want the company to really provide orderly look and feel, but State Street in particular has to be a, a, a careful eye. So I, I just kind of said, well, can you imagine um, the ambassadors uh, going ahead and picking up bikes when we see them and make them orderly, but then you have to pay us for that cost of the extra services. And they, they said, yeah, that could probably work. And that's the kind of thing we need to deal with. We need to negotiate uh, when it comes to profitability uh, may, we may not know what they're going to make, but we want to make sure that it's not at an extra cost to to uh, to the city of Santa Barbara. Uh, so Hopper hasn't given how much money they've made at UCSB or anything like that yet? They haven't given us those numbers. Okay. And as of right now, you, you don't know how much money it would cost taxpayers to allow this to operate here? Uh, uh, no, we don't. But again, it's... Uh, and part of the pilot is a discovery process. If we find that all of a sudden staff has this higher level of service that it needs to attend to because of the bike's presence, then we'll have to account for that. Uh, if, we, if the council should decide to move in any kind of permanent way, I'm sure that you would be interested in understanding what that is and how we could avoid that extra cost when they're you know, profiting. Are they, are the business, like Hopper, are, would they be taxed the same as any other business working here, or do they have a, a different type of taxing bracket? Yes, uh, Councilmember Gutierrez, they would require a business license just like any other business that operates here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, I think it's it's to us. Um, I will start just by saying that I... Um, I really like bike share. I, I mean, I see this as a benefit to our local community, actually more than to tourists. When tourists come, um, so many hotels already have bikes available for them, and I think that's where the full-day rental comes into play when, when you're here and you're visiting. I really see this as a, as a true next step in mobility for our local workers or, or people who are coming in for that last mile. I, I do think it does make a difference. Um, I would use them if I knew I could just go from point to point. Um, I like electric bikes, having some of those in the fleet, because I think in Santa Barbara, because we're a hilly community, um, to have true mobility and have that be an option, I think um, for quite a few people, that would be the only option for going up, up not steep hills, but going up to the mission or, or um, further up from there. Um, I do think it's important to analyze the effect on our local vendors who are um, more gearing towards um, tourists and, and having that competition and seeing how that's affecting that or not. Um, I think it's a good idea to start small and, and scale up. And I think um, just having seen the hopper model with I wouldn't have thought so, but having those parking areas painted and delineated does seem to affect the orderliness. And I think it makes it much more accessible to actually use. If you want to get off State Street at all, and that's already sort of covered by the tourist industry, um, I think you would need to have something like that. And maybe we don't have any of those on State Street. Maybe it's all on the off streets. And just like our parking lots, that's not too far to walk if you're on a side street and then walk onto State Street. I'm sure you can um, manage that. But I'm, I'm in favor of moving forward this, with this with something that's small, scalable, um, that we keep checking in uh, yearly to make sure it's working and that we have that sort of, if this is out of control, that we can pull back on it. But um, certainly for me, the next step of 
seeing what RFPs come back and how some of those questions are mitigated. Council Member Rouse. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, um, I'm in favor of uh, also of, of supporting what uh, staff recommends in terms of the ordinance itself. Um, what I would like to do is have a direction for staff in far as going forward RFPs. Now, are you are you still in the obser observation stage, or are you starting to get me ready to solicit and issue an RFP? Well, Madam Chair, Councilman Rouse, we we would move forward in soliciting an RFP. We would the next step uh, after Council obviously approves the ordinance would be to uh, when we have the bandwidth, which is probably in the next six months move forward with an RFP and see what kind of response we get from companies. I think to address most of our concerns about, you know, clutter and types and bike lanes and safeties and, of course, our concessionaires in the rental business, that if we were to prioritize in our first RFP just strictly doing human-powered bicycles and having other kinds of mobility devices that include power devices would be something we could phase into once we observe, for example, the 20 e-bikes they have at UCSB, how did that work out? Um, are, are they needed? I know that uh, there was one gentleman before that was, was trying to do a bike. I don't think it was, it was a bike share program, but it wasn't with the electronic technology. And said it took about 350 bikes to make a town like, to make it even a feasible. It was the guy from Colorado. I don't remember his name, but he, he was doing the thing where he had to run around with the truck and, of course, pick up the bikes at the end of the day. So how many bikes is going to be feasible and are they going to, you know, financially for this company to even make a go of it? And I've got a feeling that the 500 at UCSB and the, and the 20 e-bikes are probably on the low end of feasibility for them. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. But in terms of what our uh, clutter is, what our traffic safety is, um, how we want to corral them, and as you said, doing something, especially in the downtown where you're going to want to have these things, it's going to be difficult to make the design. I know we went through for the bike corrals up on Cannon Perdido and down by uh, the Figaro Mountain. So uh, those are no slam dunks to do those things. And where are they going to be? And are they going to be on the sidewalk? Are they going to clutter? Are they going to have some of the shared mobility issues other ones have? But I would like to see staff, myself, concentrate just on those e-bikes, uh, not the e-bikes, the standard bikes first. And let's just see how a shared mobility uh, concept goes before we evolve into the other things and if, if in fact we do about safety about convenience about use and about certainly uh, what it means to those people who have established businesses pay business licenses, and pay brick and mortar rent to either re rent or sell e-bikes and and those kind of things so I would I would then put forward a motion Madam chair supporting both parts of the recommendations by staff then we'll put out a, a, a part B to be voted on separately to direct staff uh, as they consider moving forward on RFP to uh, focus primarily, at least in the first iteration, on human-powered bicycles, leaving the other ones to further study and contemplation as we watch other agencies go through their growing pains with these things. And those would be my, my two-part motion, Madam Mayor, Madam, whatever you are. Chair, Madam Chair, Chair. Um, Chair. Councilmember Gutierrez. I uh, would second the motion. I I am totally for shared mobility, um, and also for for electronic bicycles. But so if they were going to be charged here, then then they're going to be getting power from our grid, right? So that would constitute some costs on our taxpayers, correct? Uh, Madam Chair, Councilmember Gutierrez, on the electrics, uh, if someone was to propose and we were to allow electric bikes, that they would have to charge those on their own dime. That wouldn't be on the city. But one of the interesting things about the electric conversation, which is why Hopper has theirs a drop-in in in the basket, is that Hopper, a, a non-electric bike, is not necessarily collected at the end of each day. Unlike scooters, all most scooters need to be collected to be recharged. Um, uh, bike share, not so much. They collect a bike if they find it's, it's off the, you know, where it's most likely not going to be redone and then they repurpose the bike into the pool if it's not picked up within a certain amount of time. 
let's call it uh, uh, 24 to 72 hours. With the electric bikes, and this is why Hopper has gone with the drop in the basket, is they don't want the extra cost of collecting all the bikes to charge them. That's a, that's a big lift for them. So, you know, we don't know how this market is going to emerge because it is a, a much different animal and, and different cost. And, and we are watching it, um, as Mr. Rouse uh, suggested. Okay. And uh, would it be possible to to put them in a different tax bracket so they'd have to pay more taxes? Anyone have an I don't I don't know. Um, I mean, we could talk to them about uh, surcharges or a different a different permit fee for an electric fee. Certainly. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. I I am definitely for trying to get people not to drive cars uh, more and being able to give people the opportunity to be able to move around um, easily or through our city. So I I'm definitely in support of this and. Uh, and look forward to it. Um, just another question for the e-bike portion of it is: is it does it help or hinder the RFP to have those separated out, or is or will the if you have an RFP that has both and those proposals, or if you're just limiting it to human powered, does that affect it at all? Madam Chair, I don't think it does unless there's a vendor who is is that's what they want to do. Like they want to come in and that's going to be their new thing and they want to catch, you know, the early, they're going to be an earlier, you know, put it on the street. Hey, we're going to we've got an electric fleet, so, fleet, so ours is better than any other bike share. Okay. You know, of course it would we would not be soliciting them. Okay. And then just for clarification, an e-bike, it's not a scooter. It's it's it goes what speed and it still goes in a bike lane the, or it the, goes... um, the, uh, um, the code, sorry, vehicle code section is a 20 miles an hour assist, no more than 20 miles an hour. If it, it's over 20 miles an hour, it becomes a different thing. It becomes, I think categorized as a motorcycle. And how fast does a human powered bicycle go? Uh, it, it, it really, really depends on the rider and their fitness and what, you know, what their determination is. But, uh, uh, speaking from experience in owning an electric bike, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to try very hard to stay at speed, and mo you're passing most cyclists. Okay, so there is a variation. I mean, yeah, it's and, a noticeable difference if you have an e-bike versus a bicycle. And particularly what you mentioned, going down State Street, you wouldn't see a difference. Mm -hmm. Everyone's kind of at that, you know, if there's no stop, they're, they're kind of at that 20 mile an hour. But going up State Street is a completely different story. Most people are are below ten going up versus an e bike could probably maintain sixteen seventeen miles an hour up do you see that as a safety issue that variation or or do you see that as a benefit of possible rental if you're trying to use an e bike to go up state street just your madam chair i think we 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 are concerned about all that we want to know how that works you know a state street bike lane is is, is about four to four and a half feet wide it's actually a narrower uh, bike lane and, and that's to the curb so you got you got a little gutter in there and so if you're an e-bike passing you are in the travel lane mm -hmm. uh, and the more you know it's kind of like the beach way i like to you know famously not famously quoted we're plagued by our success at the beach way you know it's great we have so many people want to use it and then we have conflicts with different users and uh so the same vein if e-bikes were to take off i think we'd go wow this is great we got lots more mobility people are you know not as inclined to uh maybe they could avoid using a car sometimes and we have better parking issues but then we now we have you know a little bit of bike congestion on the road and that's a different mm -hmm. concern and we'll just have to deal with that and see we're going to mm -hmm. get there with or without bike share i i, I foresee mm -hmm. But you're, it's a great question you, you bring up. Yeah. How, how do we deal with that? So, so to that point, I think, I mean, I would be in favor of having a few e-bikes in the fleet so that we can do that as part of the analysis of, of how is that going. Um, but we can, just, we can vote on the two motions separately. And so your part A was moving staff recommendation for the two amendments seconded by um, Councilmember Gutierrez. Let's vote on that one first.
Quick, uh, quick clarification on my, my Part B of the motion. It wasn't to, pre to preclude forever. It was for the initial rollout. And that's because, one, for two reasons, once again, there's a safety issue and whatnot. But there's also, like I said, there's a substantial concessionaire base that does this as a living in town. And so we, are we trying to you know, throw in another hunk of competition or are we just trying to get this shared mobility thing? But you know, if it appears that these other things are feasible, if UCSB has a good coexistence with them, and they're, they're, they, you know, and I know Katcha pretty well. We're, they're, they're talking about this all the time, and they're, they're still figuring it out. So, I would like to at least initially go with human powered rollout, and then we can take a breath, look back, and see where we're at. That was my point on Part B. Okay, and just to clarify too, I'm thinking of myself, and if I want to use a, uh, not, I'm not thinking of the tourist industry. I'm not going to go down and rent one for the whole day. But if I want to go uphill and um, don't want to work quite as hard. I, I might look for an e-bike on my app. Um, so I, I, I still would like to see a few in that initial rollout, five maybe, or just, just to see, are there issues, are there problems, how do they work, so that then if it ever does roll out, we have some data points for what the issues were. Um, but let's vote on the first motion first. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Gutierrez? Aye. Madam Chair Sneddon? Aye. Do we need to add the language of parks? It's, it's a part of the there. staff recommendation, so. Okay, thank you. And then a vote on part B of Councilmember Rouse's motion, which was also seconded by Gutierrez. Councilmember Gutierrez? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Madam Chair Sneddon? No. Well. And, and mainly to that, so it can go forward to council, just knowing that, that there was some discussion. And um, excellent. Okay. I believe with that, we are adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you.